Hey, everybody. Thank you for being here at NDC Copenhagen. We're going to talk about application security today and how to address it from a standard point of view. We're going to look at ASVS standard 4.0.1. And we're going to talk about why it's important, why it matters. We're going to talk about why it's changed. And we're going to look at ways that you can use it effectively in software development to help to help you do security better, right? Who here has got, who here is doing software development who's, who can say, I got security all figured out, no problem. We're all, we're all set on security here at this software company. And that's nobody, because it's still an emerging topic that everybody struggles with. No one's innocent here, right? Kind of like the coronavirus, you know, it's like it's a great equalizer information security. My name is Jim. I'm gonna be your speaker for this section. I'm a former board member of the OWASP Foundation. Um, I, uh, I work on the, several OWASP projects like the Cheat Sheet Series and the standard, the ASVS standard. I'm one, of the, I'm one of the authors of it. Been coding for a long time. I live in Hawaii. I live in Virginia. Right now I'm in Virginia, stored up in rural Virginia with a lot of food supplies, guns and ammo, and a lot of hope that we don't degenerate into rioting and looting across the world. We'll see. We'll see. And, I hope no, I, I really hope um, that you don't lose any loved ones, but this is gonna, a lot of people are gonna, gonna get hurt by this. And the, the song of the day is Don't Fear the Reaper. It's gonna hit us all. No one gets out of this alive. All right, that side, let's talk about security. Enough about the news of the day. Look at this email address. This is a valid email address that is gonna be, that it's gonna be accepted by your validation layer it's a legal email address you can email me at, but it's a SQL injection payload. So the point is even valid data can cause injection. I digress. Here's the OWASP top 10. These are the top 10 of security risks. Uh, it's a publication that OWASP pushes out every three years or so. It's a very famous list. These are the top 10 security issues of the day. And a lot of standards cite this top 10 list. In particular, the payment card industry's data security standard, they cite the OWASP top 10 here as part of that standard. I kind of think this is a bad idea. Anyways, these are some of the new categories. They're talking about proper logging, a very specific issue like XXE and XML security issue, and insecure deserialization, one of the newer topics in the world of web security. The point is, this is not an organized list. It's 10 kind of random topics. Some are high level topics like authentication. Some are specific like XXE. You don't want to base a security program off this. This OWASP top 10, you want to read it once. You want to enjoy it once and use it to learn, but then go to something else. And let, let, let's take a step back here. When we look at an application security program, there's a lot of practices that security professionals in my industry will talk about. And my industry is application security. It's the security of building secure software and testing software for security. There's all these things we recommend from security unit testing, DevOps automation of security testing, planning sprint assistance for security, all these, I'm, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hammer in on this whole idea of a, of a security checklist. This is how ASVS started. And ASVS stands for the Application Security Verification Standard. This is a, a documentation project from the OWASP Open Source Nonprofit Foundation. When this project first started, it's a basic checklist of some of the top things you can do in terms of requirements for secure development. And it was not really meant to be a standard. It was just a bunch of leading practices. And what this really is is, this is the WASVS that we're talking about. This is the web application and API application, application security verification standard. Since this standard was published, other substandards have also been released, like the mobile application security verification standard, the IoT application security verification standard. So we're gonna focus on the web version of ASVS, the original version of this standard. And by the way, the latest version, 4.0.1, the 4.0 version, this was done in GitHub, and we took open comments from the world to, uh, to triage and 
to, to clarify and to fix the requirement list that we built for this standard. So we, it wasn't done in a closed room, you know, with a secret cabal. It was done out in the open where community comments were, were welcomed. And any standard that doesn't do that, bafangu, do that to standard, I would say in Italian. All right. So this is the standard. This is the, the essential part of the standard, a list of requirements. Each requirement is going to be granular. Like, look at this. Verify that the user passwords are at least 12 characters in length. I, that's our minimum re recommendation for password length. And every app should do this. Level one, two, and three. Level one says, uh, le level, uh, sorry, level one, two, and three. The lowest level says every app should do this. A level above that is for like apps with sensitive data. And the highest level is like infrastructure apps, apps that shoot missiles or stuff like that. Really high-end infrastructure or billions of records. So three levels of severity to consider for these requirements. And, and, you'll, and who was involved? A lot of people, right? I'm one of the authors that was originally worked on by uh, uh, Jeff Williams, Dave Wickers, and Mike Baberski were some of the original authors of it. This is the current team working on the latest couple of versions. Andrew Vanderstock is the spiritual leader, and he's really the main thrust here. Daniel Cuthbert's been around from the beginning, a, a great helper. I've been working on the last two versions. Josh Grossman and uh, Mark and Abe were the three big volunteers who helped the latest version, did the majority of the work. Um, and a lot of reviewers out there, like Ron Paris, who's an uh, NPMer, and Adam Claude Hill, and lots of real smart people jumped in, smarter than us, to help clarify our requirements. This is what makes it great. Now, what we changed in the 4.0 version is to make the actual like artifacts behind the standard more useful. So everything's in Markdown. It's, it's just, there's a script that we can use to generate a, a version of this in any kind of file format. So the, the raw standard itself is usable by teams. So I think that's important. It's com NIST 863 compliance. Um, oh, oh, that's the, that is the digital authentication guideline from the US government. And they released a new identity guideline out uh, like last year that was mind boggling and how awesome it was and well written it was. And you know, you don't have to follow our standard. You can swap out the authentication requirements for your European standards. Like I know you have specific standards around banking using digital certificates. There's no reason why you can't swap out sections for your own standards. Also, you know, we had an IoT section, but IoT is not specifically web. IoT is its own thing. So we ripped out all the IoT requirements that were newly written for 4.0. And instead of adding it to the 4.0 standard, we just did a preview appendix chapter. So the requirements are there, but they're not being mixed in with web. These are for you know, different teams should have different requirements based on your architecture. We also change the requirements to address for real what a modern web application is. Full support for things like Lambdas and uh, uh, containers, a lot, a lot more requirements in the world of API since they've taken off um, more, th more requirements around DOM XSS and Java, since JavaScript clients are, are in vogue these days. And similar, we have those requirements augmented in the latest version. We also mapped the requirements to CWEs. And, by, and, and let's talk about CWEs. CWEs, it's the common weakness enumeration, a list of weaknesses from MITRE. It's a standard in the world of security and a very important one. Well, let's talk about this. ASVS, the standard that we've written, this is about controls for web apps. And weaknesses are not controls. There's no way to make a clean mapping. And the mapping doesn't even make sense. But we got asked to do it so many times that we just did it to shut people up so we can move on with our lives. That's the truth. So it's an imperfect mapping, it's ugly. And not every item has a CWE, but we did it. Check the box, that box is checked, we did it. So what's changed? Everything. We renumbered everything from scratch. Okay, this is not exciting, but it's important. Numbering matters, because we have version one, we have requirement say one, two, and three. Then for version two, we remove the second requirement. Now we have requirement one and three and five and six. So after several versions, we have requirement one, three, nine, 11, with a lot of, with a lot of gaps. So a version requirement, a, a ASVS4, we wipe the slate clean. And, we, and we, we wipe the slate clean and renumbered everything from scratch. Nuke and pave, baby, you know, like we're seeing right now. So each section is reorganized and reordered. 
we got rid of a lot of duplications. And L1 is the new minimum, we say. L1 are the require any requirement flagged as L1. And again, this, requ this standard is just a list of about 300 or so requirements. That's the whole standard. That's the guts, the guts of this. L1 are requirements that every app should follow. Remember, every standard, every requirement is flagged as L1, L2, or L3. And L1 is every app. That's the new minimum. All of level one should be testable by your pen testers. Um, and it's the only level that's easily testable. And you should be doing hybrid reviews with a combination of a penetration tester by a security expert and using a variety of scanning tools to augment that work. Um, and by the way, DevOps is about scanning like 100 times a day. I digress. So we also added in the PCI requirements. We didn't like to do this. It's not super web centric, but it's needed for PCI support because we're trying to help replace the OWASP top 10 in PCI. So we want to make PCI happy so they get rid of the OWASP top 10 out of PCI and use ASVS instead. So we included buffer overflows, integer and say string operations, and, and other things to ensure PCI compliance within our standard. They don't, they're not perfect maps to the standard, but we made PCI happy, and that's a big win. Um, what's gone, the mobile chapter is removed. Mobile's out. Mobile has its own standard, the mobile ASVS. The IoT chapter pushed to the appendix. Um, any defense that was one browser or one language only, we got rid of it. And things that weren't that important, that were debatable, we got rid of it. So we're cleaning house. We're cleaning it up. So here's the ASVS detail. So section, I'll, I'm not going to talk about every requirement. There's 300 requirements or so. So I'm going to talk about the categories, and then we'll finish up here. So level, so level of uh, category one architecture. This is about like the design of your app and more high level issues. Um. We talk about the need for process, like a secure software development lifecycle. We talk about the need for security review, like threat modeling. And we talk about the idea, just the general requirements that you have to build security in from day one at the design and architectural conception. So it's like security is intentional. It's the thing that you build, not something you slap on at the end. We don't do this, it's not level one, it's, it's for level two and three apps only, for high, high, high risk, risky apps, high sensitive data and similar. Level two, uh, category two is authentication, identity. We align this again with NIST 863, except for passwords. NIST says to use eight character passwords, but fungu, you eight character password. We do 12 character passwords at the ASVS, that's level two. So um, credential life cycle from issuance to retirement, we uh, we talked about credential construction protection. We talked about new attack categories like credential stuffing and how to store a password, FIDO and multi-factor. So it's a modern set of requirements to give developers proper guidance. Level three, session management. The big change there is we talked about adding JOTs to your world, JSON web tokens. JSON web tokens are the main artifact used for stateless session management when you have you primarily for stateless APIs. That's a big departure from web app session management that we had in days gone by. So category four of the ASVS standard. If you just got here, hello, you're late. But if you just got here, we're talking about the OWASP application security verification standard, a list of security requirements for developers in web development. We're looking at the different categories right now because you're late, this is category four. This covers API access control security, which is a bit different than web app security, like mapping to OAuth and mapping to a REST design. And, and we cover serverless tech here as well, um, which is you know, a little, little, little different the way we design access control in similar layers. Level five is about like basic data handling. You validate, you sanitize, or you're in code. When you're trying to use data, when you have data, that you have from a user or any variable, frankly, but primarily user or untrusted data, data that the attacker can modify, you gotta validate it or you have to sanitize it or encode it before you use it, depending on what you're doing with it. And explaining this is important. We also, and, and this is all about user interface security primarily, but also issues like injection prevention, validating, validating URLs to stop server-side request forgery, 
and proper configuration for things like deserialization attacks. They're just not doing it, design stuff. So major revamp of this section that talks about data handling. For user interface stuff, like you validate, if it's a URL I'm putting into a form tag for the action, I wanna validate to make sure that URL is not a, a JavaScript URL or similar. If I'm letting the user submit HTML, then I'm gonna render for another user, like through a WYSIWYG editor, I wanna run that through an HTML sanitizer, that's sanitizing. And if I wanna display data exactly like a user typed it in, in a web page, I wanna encode in some kind of escaping. There's a quick blip on what those three controls are about. Stored cryptography, we, 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 the big change there is using um, modern key management mechanisms and key stores. Level six, error handling. Um, we, we, we talk about being careful not to leak sensitive information in, in errors. We talk about proper logging. Um, yeah, error handling is boring, I don't like it. It's important, but I'm, I'm gonna move on, I'll move on. V8 data protection, like, like encryption and transit sensitive data protection around GDPR and California laws and how to properly store data client side and, and what the risks are with that. Like local storage, I can hack me some local storage. Cross-site scripting, if I can inject JavaScript into your website, I could steal all the data from local storage, it's terrible. V9, communication security. So V8 is data protection, more around protecting data at storage. So, and I, I slipped up there a bit. So it's just a data storage security where V9 is communication security. Most, most, most importantly, proper HTTPS everywhere configured properly. Um, category 10 is about malicious code, things like Easter eggs and backdoors and similar. That's, that's usually a, a level three issue. Category 11, business logic. You know, something as simple as a, as a a step abuse attack where suppose you have an e-commerce website where I add items to a shopping cart, I check out, add my address, add my payment information, and then complete the checkout. If I can skip by hard coding the URL and like add to my shopping cart, then skip to the checkout step and just check out without paying, that's an abuse of business logic. Common problems, hard to find. Files and resources, we're fixing things like um, remote file inclusion primarily and, in, and, down, and file upload and download security and just file IO as we mix that with user requests and user input can get real tricky. We cover all that in this section. Level 13, uh, category 13 is a complete revamp, right? It's a complete revamp. API security, addressing RESTful stuff, addressing new things like GraphQL, it's a whole party. Um, V14 configuration, primarily to address the cloud and and modern deployment mechanisms. Like, and it's the same old stuff. It's just a different way to configure it. Some really unique things you got to get right when pushing stuff to, to the cloud. And very often we see less professional administrators and more developers managing these things, which is good and bad. Bad if you don't have the skills. Good in in that we have less. We have more power we give to the developer to get stuff done. So all the configuration stuff is there. Now our recommendation is, again, you don't just use ASVS out of the box. What I recommend you do is you fork it specific for your company. Let developers make the final decisions around what requirements you're gonna keep. So they own it, so they do it, and you can modify your fork of the standard over time as you want to augment the work that you're doing. Or if you're going to use ASVS out of the box as is, start with level one and for every app and work your way up to level two and level three for, for the more sensitive apps within your organization. You can, it's free, it was 4.0.1 was released last year. So it's been around for a year already. There's Wiki and GitHub. If, if you're opinionated and don't like our comment, don't like our requirements, I applaud your intellect. Please go to GitHub and give us comments under the 4.0.1 branch. It's all it's all on the wiki, all our contact information's on the wiki. And uh, if you have questions for me, I'm jim at owas.org. I'm also at jim at manico.com, my day job. I'm really happy you're here at NDC Copenhagen to learn more about software development. 
I hope you download and read and review all of the ASVS requirements to teach you more about application security while you're going through it. If you have any questions, I'm one of the authors, just drop me a note. I'm always happy to answer questions. You're great. You're awesome. I'm done with this talk. You have a wonderful day. And don't forget, don't fear the reaper. I weep for those we lose. I do. And it may hit you, but, you know, just keep charging. Learn about security. Learn more about development. Master the art while you're hidden away at home. Master the art of, of, of software engineering even more. And have a great time out there. Thank you so much, everybody.